This is Couples Court with the Cutlers. Good day. This is the case of Jones versus Jones. You've been married two and a half years and together six years? Yes. Yep. But the most interesting part is there's a 25-year age difference, correct? Yeah. All right, Mr. Jones, I ain't mad at you. You do you. I like that. <laughs> Why are we here, Mrs. Jones? Well, we're here today because I believe my husband's cheating on me and I have the physical evidence to prove it. Oh, boy. I'm not what? cheating. Hey, just straight up, I'm, I'm not, not doing it. I'm not cheating. I don't know. Everything was all right. Every time she just think I'm cheating. Every time I, every time I go in and out, I'm cheating. All right. I don't mind if you go out. That's not the problem. The problem is when you go out and you stay out for a day, for two days, you, you don't come back. Like, you know, and then I'm calling you and you don't answer your phone. Yeah, I be in the area where I live at. I don't be, like, in a park, sitting in the... Oh, my God. <laughs> three o'clock in the afternoon to about two, three o'clock in the morning. Who does that? And, and why you want me to believe you in the park all that time? No. Okay, no, let me ask you this. this. Has this always been the case? When did this start? Because I can't believe y'all been about, together eight years. About, about a year ago. What is the current status of your relationship? Right now, we're on the rocks. We're on the rocks because I can't, I can't deal with him being in the streets like that. I can't deal with it. So what's at stake? I mean... Yeah, when you say you can't deal with it, what does that mean? Meaning, yeah. if I find out he's cheating on me, that would be the last show. Right now, I could try to kiss him. He turned away, no, my, uh... You know, if I try to hug him, he Your don't Honor. want me hugging you him. Like, uh, come Honor. on. I have to beg that, him no, to, no, to have no, sex. No, it's, no. It's, it's too How long you had to beg him to have sex? Now, that's been going on for at least a year and a half. Your Honor. So, Your Honor. Why, why, would I have, why would I have sex with her? She said, I'm cheating every day. Every day, she said, I'm cheating. I'm cheating every day. I'm so tired So, what do you that. think I'm going to think of you not having sex? When you were happy, when it was good, tell me what that looked like. Oh. So we can have a comparison here. When we first met, it was, oh my gosh. He was like a jackhammer. Well, well, All right? Now. You see that smile? Look at her. As soon as you said that, she just smiled and smiled. I didn't even know she had dimples till then. Oh. When back when, oh man. Back when oh. we was first going out, you know, he used to take me places. We used to go to the oh, movies. No. I mean, um, when we first met, I was it was love at first sight for me. Uh, I, uh, me too, young. I, me too. I just was walking, you know, I was going somewhere, and I saw him. And even though he's not my age or in my age range, or maybe the the cutest looking guy, he's not. But when I saw him, I was attracted to him, and I felt as though like, oh man, look at him. I could I see myself with him, and I went up to him and I talked to him. Look and at that. We, you know, we was talking and I we exchanged numbers and we have been inseparable, inseparable. from that day. And it's, it's still like that, y'all. Even okay. though you're going through that, I still stay there. I still you're stay there. Right. I'm still around. So, I'm still here. So, Mr. Jones, how did you feel? You have this beautiful young lady take the first step. You know, women don't always take the first step. That's correct. I mean, that's I, for me, I had to work. I had to work. I had to work. You know, <laughs> so women don't always take the first step. Who said I love you first? He did. Ah. The first time that I made love to her, it was real special. Her mother got a house, a big house, right? I had to play like I was hurt to stay there for the weekend. I told her something happened to me. I stayed there. We made love. I was in love ever since. And this thing started happening until she, until she starts saying I cheat. When the cheaters came in, that's when I, I started acting crazy. Because I'm not doing it. So when you get accused of something, how you feel? And I, you ain't do it. Yeah, you know you what... You ain't do it, how you feel? You're you know when a man that's remembers... The the first time he makes love to you, that's huge. And it clearly, you, I mean, you feel this woman. Oh, I can tell. I love her. But you're not feeling that right today. No, I that's really feel unloved. I that's really the problem. It's okay. Her. Like it's he said, he and thinks that opened... I it's fall out of love with him. I feel like he fell out of it's love her. with me. It's Maybe her. because after the baby, I got bigger. I was not always like this. Well, you good. know, fluffy girl still got that's it. What I'm that's I, all I, I'm saying. I like him like that. Fluffy girl like, still got it. I like him like that. You know, I like him like that. I like him like that. I all like right, him, so... I like him fluffy. But even... <laughs> so, even though he is saying and professing his love very clearly here, you aren't feeling the love and you brought this suit, this love suit, yeah. because you think he's cheating. 
Is that correct? Yes. Tell me specifically why you think he's cheating. Um, as of today, I think he's cheating because we are hanging out. He's got... He's hanging by his... With his friend. His friend has his girlfriend and I'm with him. Let's go in the park and drink and smoke cigarettes and talk. And I guess they wanted to re... You know, just catch, catch up. And so, the girl that he has, she gets up, she wants to go to the store. As we go and walk into the store, we get out the park, she's going to tell me how her, her and him was kissing and how he wanted to get with her sexually. But I didn't know that was her friend. That, I, that was... We were just <laughs> boyfriend and girl. We okay, just, wait, 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 wait. Hold just, up. You didn't know that it was her friend? No, that wasn't my friend. That was your friend's she was, girlfriend. She, she you told me you were friend. I started to be... Okay, wait, 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 wait. Does that matter? Yeah, what difference does that yeah, make? I mean, y'all been Thank together you. eight years. Were you kissing her eight years ago? He's been, like, not once but twice, the same girl and the same guy he brings into my home. No. The first time he brought Hold his on. friend on, into Jack. our home about 3 o'clock in the morning, I jumps up. His friend and this woman, he won't even let me approach the woman because you know what I'm about to say. Excuse me, who, how did you know my husband? How did you get in here? What's going on right now? Right. He wouldn't let me go near this girl. Okay, let me ask you this, Mr. Jones. I don't do that. All right. You, if you've got your friend and his woman in your house, why would it be a problem then for Ms. Jones to just go and say, who is this and Thank why are you here? Why would that I, be a I problem? I can tell you what happened. I, let me tell you what happened. You tell me if I'm right. She came out the bedroom and jumped bad. And he was like, oh, wait a minute, that's let me keep you... That's the type of person she is. Yeah, and so he was trying to keep her from getting into a physical fight right. with this woman. So if my friends are over at the house, that's what you're gonna do? You're gonna wake up in the morning and just jump bad immediately? No, because I got you better trained. Uh, <laughs> I try to do it like this. Since it's late, I know she's in a room with the baby. Mm -mm. I try to settle mm -mm. him in, and then as I that go inside... That was one of your late nights when you didn't even answer the phone See, when you came go... in, and you won't... That was one of the nights. When night. I go in, I'm oh. go in the room and do, tell him. Do you believe he slept with that woman yeah. in your home? I did not, yeah. Yana. That's a lie. Yeah. That's a lie. That's a lie. That's a lie. That's a lie. Okay, this that's wrong. And we come from the Bronx. Mm -hmm. You okay. know that's considered to be the hood. And? So... I don't think That's so, but how they get down. No, everybody don't I've do that. Been, uh, before I've had everybody my baby, do I've been a wild child. Yeah, I'm so, not yeah. proud of it. Let's talk about I'm that. I'm not proud of it. Let's talk I've about been that. a wild child, and I know how they get down in the Bronx. And yes, it be men, sometimes three and four men. Yeah. Oh. Or one or two so girls. Uh, so I know how they get down. So you. So that's why they call the boogie down bra. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. And I wear the crown. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> okay. Well, that explains that. What else you got? I check his phone and I smell his private. Yeah. Or yeah. Him. You smell his private. Yeah. I heard yeah. you say you smell his private. That's yeah. Not when, true. I the, when I get when I get Okay. Wait, Mr. Jones. Wait. wait. Drop him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is yeah. that for real? Every day, every time I go outside. Okay, Miss Jones, as soon as he hits the door, like the door. you say drop him. Drop, drop him. And you're and smelling you his profit. Yes, I am. Wow. And I made sure. Wow. Not around. That's not cool. Ron. That's not cool, Your Honor. Ron, is this just us? Your Honor, Are that's not, not cool. Not my world. She said I smell like sex. She went crazy, burnt all my new clothes. I just bought everything. She went in the back and went crazy on them. I got the, I got the, the poop right here. Thank you, sir. All right, Miss Jones. What did you, that? uh, did you do what he's saying you did? She... Yes, I did. Isn't it, that's what, straight out of waiting to exhale, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. I don't have words for this one. Miss I... Jones, okay, but you talk about him being gone for long periods of time. Oh. I'm beginning to understand just maybe why he's at the park for such a long no, period of time. No, but you got it wrong. He loves to start arguing. Okay, well, let me ask you this. Wait, wait, wait. No, 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 I got no, I got I'm on a mission. I'm on a mission, man. I'm on a mission. I'm on a mission. I got to ask this. I got to ask this. Do you have any other circumstances? Yes. All right. Um... I told you about the text messaging with the yeah. woman saying, come over. No, he you said, didn't tell us about oh, that. Yeah. No. Uh, well, Your there Honor, was a text was, message. I, that was, the woman was saying, come over. 
she he um he texts back I'm here. That was not my she phone. She gets down and she that gets was my the bell phone. number and all that. And then he's gonna say, oh was, oh no, that wasn't for me. That was my that nephew was phone. for my nephew. My I nephew, got a nephew girlfriend. Got... Well, your nephew got his own smartphone. What's going on? Why are was, you using your phone? I was holding his own phone. No, man. please. He he's gonna come and get it later. He told me to hold it till he comes back. Mm. Why? No 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 no, uh, no Mr. No, Jones no. I, I'm I can tell. No, no I'm Mr. Black. Jones. Mr. Jones, you I, could, you'd have been better off yeah. telling me a unicorn gave you that yeah. phone. <laughs> so well, I this, I, I just want to be sure that what we have, the only thing we have, you ain't got nothing else to tell me, is the text messages. No, there's the, something else. Come on. Yes, there. I found earrings. Dollar oh. earrings at that. And he found it. Talk about he wanted. I found it. It okay. was in my bedroom. And, and also, also I found like this scrunchie that had like dying rhinestones. I don't, I never buy that. That was. I hers. mean, it looked cute. I would have bought was it. That was hers. But it, uh, I didn't buy oh. it. Your Honor. Dude. Your Honor. Can I speak, Your Honor? Can I speak? Yes, I want you to Your speak. Honor, I swear. In the Bronx, you found stuff on the floor. I, when I was walking on the ground. It was, it was at nighttime. I was walking by. I seen something. It was shine. not nighttime. I picked it up. I put it in my pocket. I thought it was gold. I asked her, I said, I said, you think this real? When she looked at the earring, where you get this from? Ah, she going crazy and everything like this. I said, Dad, I should need neighbor center. I thought it was gold. I ain't gonna lie. I put it, you know. How then, could you think something then, that's already turning is gold? It didn't look okay, I didn't so see the, the turn on. I didn't see that. I didn't see that. It looked real to me. But Mr. Jones, you didn't walk in and say, honey, I found this gold earring. At some point it was discovered, and then you told her that. Yeah. Mr. Cutler, I, I think we've heard enough. I, th I think we have heard enough. Okay, so you got the woman in the house at Constant 3 a.m. disrespect, yes. You claim he was kissing a woman friend in the park. Yes. You've got text uh, messages. And that he admitted to that one. You've got him coming home smelling like... He smelled like sex. Because she smelled uh, yes. his private parts. We can't leave that out. Okay. <laughs> that, that right there is rich. You've got the dollar earring that you found on the floor. Yeah. Do you realize how serious this is? No, he doesn't. And so far, your explanations have not been holding sense. water. No sense. So... If it turns out that these allegations are true, do you realize she's gone? Uh, it might sound wrong, but I didn't do none of this stuff. Ms. Jones, will you be able to put it aside and move forward and never yes. speak on it again? I would say I'm so sorry. I'll get on my knees. I would, I will, I will beg for your forgiveness if this is not true. I didn't do nothing. You ain't do nothing. All right, well, when them test results come yeah, back, let's see if you ain't do nothing. Well, in order to get to the bottom of this, this court has ordered a polygraph examination. <laughs> and we have the results. The court has engaged the services of licensed private investigator Todd Redding. Uh, Ron, would you please escort Mr. Redding into the courtroom? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you for being here. Thank um, you. Now, part of your team consists of polygraph examiners, is that correct? That's correct, Your Honor. All right. Now, Mr. Redding, Mr. Jones was asked between May 2016 and June 2016, did he have sexual intercourse with a woman who was in the apartment at 3 a.m.? That's correct, Your Honor. What was his response to that question? His response to the question was no. What did the polygraph exam show? The lie detector examination determined that he was being truthful. Yeah. You're smiling. That make you feel better? Yeah, because she was in my home, and that's just like the ultimate disrespect, if anything, was to wet down. Hey, Hold on. Don't get ahead of yourself. We got another question. Yeah. Mr. Jones was asked, since being married, has he had sexual intercourse with anyone else? That's correct, Your Honor. And what was his response? Your Honor, his response to the question, again, was no. All right. What did the polygraph reveal? The lie detector examination determined that he was also being truthful. <laughs> I see tears in your eyes. I got come way down. Yeah. Tears of joy? Yeah. 
All right, what you gonna do, sister? Hmm? What you getting ready to do? I'm so sorry. You need to go <laughs> over there, girl. I'm oh! so sorry. I beg your forgiveness. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. All right, bring it in. Bring it in. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, you making it clear right here with everybody. Okay. You gonna stop smelling him, right? Yes. yes. That's first. That right there is got yes. to stop. Yes. Tell her that. First. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Stop right. that first, because I'm yes. tired of dropping my pants. Man. All right. <laughs> All right. Now the flip side of that, Mr. Jones, is you can't give her a reason to want to do that. All right. Now, I like parks as much as everybody else. Okay. I like ticket, spending time in the park. Now. I like going to the park. <laughs> But you can't spend eight, ten hours a day in the park right. avoiding going home. So it's a two-way street. You have to not give him a reason not to want to come home, mm -hmm. and you got to go home. <laughs> it's as simple as that. Thank you so much. You all have been together for three years. You have one child together. And allegations of cheating are destroying your relationship. That's right. Mr. Crawford, why have you brought your girlfriend to court today? Well, um, I brought my girlfriend today because um, I recently canceled our engagement because I feel like she's been cheating on me. Um, I've been seeing things on her phone that, I, that no man should see. Um, basically, I just want to find out she's cheating on me. All right. But if there's cheating going on, you're well, done. I, I'm gone, honestly. I, I, I feel like I've done what I can, you know, to try to hold on to our relationship. You know, um, I give her my entire check. You know, every Friday I give him my whole check. I say, you hear that, Mr. Color? He gives her his entire check. <laughs> yeah, I know. You, you make it a well, hard honestly, on the rest I, of us I now. Do, I do it honestly because, you know, I work, I work in the kitchen. So I do more than 42 to 45 hours, you know, a week, depending on they give me Yana, overtime, you know. He gives me his entire check only because he knows he does not know how to manage money. Yeah, and I, I admit that. And that's no, why that, I give him that's check. not what. No, no, no. Let's be very clear. Yeah. There are a lot of men who know they can't manage money and they don't give a yep. piece of the check. True. True, true. So, true. The, fact, <laughs> so the fact that you have a man who earns the money, mm -hmm. recognizes he may not be so good with the money, yeah, and turns like it responsibly it. over to you, who handles the money, is huge. Yeah, don't and I, don't underrate mm -hmm. that. Yeah, and I appreciate that. I don't, you know, I don't down him for that. He does work hard. He does a lot for me and for my daughter. What are you here to prove today? I'm here to prove that I'm not cheating. I feel like I, I get blamed for a lot of stuff. Like, I don't... He doesn't give me a chance. He will pick up my phone, look at my phone, and be like, I know you're doing Tell something. Tell him why, though. Tell him why. But how can you know that I'm doing something just because you have that feeling? Because that's what he says. I have a feeling you're doing something. No. What it's are you talking about? Like, all right. So I, I basically took her finger one night, put it on her iPhone. You know <laughs> what I mean? And that's... I get no pride. It's that's not that's why I get no privacy. I have nothing to hide on my phone. She's I have nothing to hide either. He knows my password. I'm like this. Take my phone. You know what I mean? So, well, so, wait a minute. Wait a minute. So you took her finger, finger. and opened up her phone. Yep. I'm still there. Mm -hmm. And what did you find? Well, um, nothing. I had nothing. Okay. She <laughs> nothing. got basically fake Facebook accounts. I go on the pictures. It's random people. Like it look like a model with big boobs and everything. I'm like, this not you. And then I go on her messages, and then I see her talking to her ex boyfriend about sexual things and stuff like that. You know, why the hours that I'm that I wasn't work. on Facebook. I feel like if you're not gonna treat me a certain, the, the way I'm supposed to be treated, somebody else will. Yeah, but I take care of her like I should for her to treat me right. And when she don't treat me right, that just gets me mad because I'm like, I do everything I can. Have you ever heard the saying, two wrongs don't make a right? Yes. <laughs> that does not work. Yeah. And it sure doesn't work going to another man who you've had a relationship with and say, you know, this thing I'm in right now, it ain't working. Because that's an invitation like, oh, well, how's it look, Mr. Cutler? Tell, tell me how you feel. I feel badly. Mr. Cutler's not treating me white. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. I know somebody who can treat you right. Who can treat me right? Come on, let's talk about it. Mm. And, then the mu it and then the music starts. <laughs> and then the music starts. That's right. Right. So if you got a problem with him, it's not a problem with your ex, it's a problem with him. And you go back to him. Now, you may have to cool off, but cool off doesn't mean get hot with somebody else. It means cool off. What are the warning signs you have, Mr. Crawford? Well, one of them would be, like, our sexual life, you know? Like, when it comes down to being, you know, I feel like I, I throw myself on her and she doesn't want he just, me, he's that's not, not He the said the right keyword right there, he throws himself at me. Like, he, yeah, doesn't, he doesn't, doesn't do nothing she romantic. Doesn't me, he will like, literally come up to me you know, and be like, like, let's have sex. Like, right now. That's it. Well, Mr. Crawford... And I'm like... <laughs> 
uh, okay. And you, you're not feeling that? that? No, that's boring. Who wants to... That's I like, right now. Oh, man. In order to have sex with her, I gotta massage her feet. You gotta like, do come something. On. Like, I, where's you gotta massage? do something. You, wait, 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 wait. Like, where's my massage at? Here's the thing. <laughs> It's nothing wrong with a good foot massage. Come nah, on. I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. But every time to bribe me for sex, I have to massage you. You gotta do something. Like, you gotta, on. you know, tickle my yeah. arm. But do you something. initiate it? Yeah. Never. I, never. She never she never says, hey, babe, you wanna have sex? Like, look. It's always you initiating. It's always like, cause he, he I doesn't initiate. I like he just tries. That's, that's just it. me. Like, do something romantic. Like, you know, take me out to eat, then, you know, get, get drunk or something, go home, and then, you know, maybe a little What do you do for, for him? What you mean, romantically? Like, yeah. Do, everything. Do you initiate it? Do you? Yeah, I kiss. Do you him, give like... him a foot massage Hell as a no. prelude to sex? <laughs> Hell no. Hell no. But she also says a lot. Like, whenever we, most of the time when we argue, she says that she's gonna leave me for another guy and that another guy's gonna raise my daughter. You know, and I'm like, I do my part as it is, you know, to take care of what's mine. Okay, so you know? have you already picked the next man out? <laughs> no, it's probably I, a couple on I, I just I, I let him know, like, cause he feels surreal. He feels like I'm not going away. That's his that's his main thing that he always. I don't says need her. He going should away. feel that way. I want my daughter. That's it. Yeah, of Shouldn't course. he feel like you're gonna be there? Yeah, of course. But that doesn't mean you're gonna treat me any way you want to, and I'm gonna stay because you feel that way because you think, oh, if I if I, you leave me, I'm not gonna be able to do nothing without you. He feels like if he leaves, I'm gonna be stranded. So, so you he use dies, the threat but... of being with somebody else to, to keep him in check, to scare him. That's not scaring me. That's just. That's just making me want to find out more. But, and but Mr. Crawford, here's the, here's the other side of that. You've got to make her feel like she's special. You've got to treat her like a queen. Are you doing that? I mean, I, no, I'm not. Cause, I'm not. Because you talk about how much you work and provide for your family, which is good. Right. And here's the thing, love. Money is great. Right. Money but it ain't everything. everything. That's right. And so you have to do little things to let her know that you care. I do. I try to be wait, a family person. Wait, wait, hold up. See, there you go. Oh, you're not you, listening. You're not listening. You're jumping in already. You got to listen. What's hot is you, you sending a, leaving a little note on the bed in the morning. I appreciate you. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. leaving something in her coffee cup like, I'm leaving something you sweeter than what you're going to ever put in this cup. <laughs> it sounds corny, but I'm telling you, it works. Yeah. <laughs> it works. Why you haven't been together for a long time? That's exactly. It. Why do you think she's cheating right, right now? So, like I said, I do my dirt at nighttime. You know, I find out all, oh, everything I need to know at night because that's the time she sleeps and sometimes I don't have time to sleep. One night, you know, I'm getting, a guy calls her phone. I answer it, I start, while she's sleeping, I start talking like a girl, you know, like, yeah, who's this? He's like, hey, how you Wait, doing? what does that sound like? Oh, I, <laughs> I'm like, hello? Like, you know? <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, he, 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 he honestly felt for it. So, like, he was telling me, he was like, listen, was I, wanna, I wanna see you again, you know, I wanna be with you. I'm like, so, honestly, to me, I feel like they had sex, because on the phone, he's talking about, oh, I had a great time, this, that, and the third. I'm like, and I asked her, and it's always, uh, uh. And he was like, oh, when can I see you again? And I'm like, oh, tomorrow, whatever. And then he's like, I see you, and click. You know, right. so I'm like, who, I ask so, the next day, who's this guy? So it's the see you again part that's getting you because that means, one, she's seen him, yeah. and they're making plans to see each other yeah. again. So I worked overnight, I worked night shifts. So he asked me, like, oh, do you need a ride? You know, I'm a cab driver, I'm about to leave too, and you're about to get off your shift so I could drive you home. I said, hey, why not? What kind of ride did he give you? <laughs> <laughs> a taxi <Nowhere>. ride. <laughs> He literally gave me a ride. We talked the whole ride. Yeah, we had a conversation. And that's her all the time. It. It, is an, I don't, uh, it is... It was another story, too, that I wanted to mention, um, where she honestly sits there while I'm at work during the hours and sits there and talks to this guy. How do you know this? Because I have proof. I have proof right here. Ron, would you grab those for us, yes. please? Thank you. Your honors. Thank you. Hmm. Yeah. And these are the messages that you found on her phone using her finger to swipe. Yep. And she writes, like, I'm not coming unless we blank type blank. Mm -hmm. He said, you said you wanted to. And she responded, so we established that, right? He says, yes, that we were with it. Blank, blank. And other man, I don't know if you were still down because you're bringing the baby. Mm. Wow. Mr. O'Hara, like why are you sending messages to a man about I'm not you coming said you wanted we... to blank? Honestly, I have no excuse for that, but it was all talk. I was mad well, at But we him want at the you moment. to be honest. Yeah, it was it was all talk. I, I was mad at him at the moment and I just decided I didn't do nothing with him. It was just really a conversation. And what was this conversation? Um, you were planning to come see him. Yeah. 
Um, he, that you were bringing the baby with you. Yeah, he was asking me if I was bringing the baby with me. No, the, no, the text no. he said she was on her way over there. He's like, I'll see you later. To go and it says, yeah, I didn't know if you were still down because you bringing the baby. You didn't... He didn't ask you yeah, to bring... He, yeah, he didn't show you all the text messages. He had asked me before. And he asked me if I was going to bring the baby. I was like, I don't know. No, he asked me if I was going to come. I said, I don't know because I have my daughter, so I'm not trying to, like, go nowhere. And that's why he said, but I don't know if you're still down because you're bringing the baby. I was like... No, well, that doesn't even make sense. Well, if you're going to do some blank type blank, why were you bringing the baby? It but was really all talk. Like, like, we was just like, um, saying back and forth. Nothing was actually, like, I was never going to How would you feel if I nothing. did that to you, though? You know? How would you feel if he did I, that I would you? be mad, of course. You'd be, be mad, mad or you'd be, you know, beating me up and breaking up with me. The only reason why I'm honestly together, I love her to death and I have a beautiful six-month-old daughter with her. All right, you so you, you've seen text messages, you've called phone calls. Have you ever caught her with another man? No. Oh, yeah. There was, there was one... OK, so we live in New York City. I went to my... I followed... She told me that she was going to uh, drop off some boots at her friend's house. So I said, get her, go do your thing. I followed her on the train all the way to Times Square. When we get off on Times Square, her ex-boyfriend is standing in the front with a bicycle, and I'm walking up like... I recognize that guy, because he don't like me neither, you know? So I'm like... <laughs> Obviously, because I'm with her, you know? So I'm like, all right, whatever. So then he points me out, like, isn't that your man? She turned around and vanished. Like, she ran. Like, I'm like... And I couldn't even find her. I'm like, yo, where she went? Like... So you caught her red-handed in Times Square. Oh, she can tell you, because she, she ran. She saw... She knows that I was there. OK, uh, honestly, I went to him because we was going through some stuff, you feel me? We didn't have no money, so I was... My ex-boyfriend always used to give me money for no reason. I knew... I was going to tell him, but I'm like, by the time I know he's not going to let me go, he's going to get upset. All right, wait so, a minute. Hold on. Hold on. I'll sing oh, it. Wait, 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 hold, up, hold on. I want you to be I'm quiet. Sorry. Now, me and Mr. Color been around the block, through the block, over the block. <laughs> so, we know grown men don't give grown women money for nothing. Now, he may not be collecting his payment just when he gives you the money. It's like a down but... payment. It's like an installment plan. Yeah, it may be layaway. Yeah. <laughs> but he's coming back to get something one day, because that's how this thing works. So, with all that information... Why did you run? No, that's not that's the question. question? No. <laughs> he said he wanted to know you too. You get a... Don't get ahead of yourself. All right. All right. What's the question? The question is, did you sleep with your ex? No. You have not slept with no. your ex since you've been with Mr. Crawford? No. Or any other man. You, no. you know, I'm thinking it's not something good going here. I think we've heard enough testimony because what we have here is Mr. Crawford says she's always throwing up the fact that she's going to meet up with an ex, that she right. slept with an ex, that she's got men calling her phone late at night. She's meeting her ex in Times Square to receive gifts from him, and then when she sees Mr. Crawford, she runs. This court has done a full and complete investigation to determine... Is she cheating? <laughs> At this time, the court would like to hear from private investigator Todd Redding. Ron, would you please escort Mr. Redding into the courtroom? Yes, Sean. How are you, Mr. Redding? I'm fine, Your Honor. Thank you for Good being to see here. You. Thank you. The court ordered Ms. Alejandra to submit her phone for examination. Did your team examine her phone? Your Honor, our team member found over 892 deleted photos. And out of those 892, four of those deleted photos happened two days ago at 1.18 a.m. Go. Oh. OK. And so what we have here are the deleted... Whoa. Uh-huh. These are very up-close and personal pictures. These could be used to teach a, an anatomy class, actually. Yes, ma'am. This is, this is a lot. That's crazy. So who did you send them to? To him. He has all the... He, all those pictures I ain't gonna, he recorded. I got some news, but I didn't, I didn't get no 890. Like... <laughs> those were, what, two days ago, right? Ron, would you hand these to Mr. Crawford? Did you take these photos? see those. Well, I've right seen now. them. You see them. <laughs> yeah. OK, those are ones you took. OK. Yeah. All right, well, that explains that. Mr. Redding, did you recover anything else? Yes, Your Honor. There were two very graphic deleted videos also. Yeah. You push it. I don't want to push it. <laughs> <sighs> All right. These well, are uh, videos of the very up thing. close and personal videos of... Yeah. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Those, oh, okay. those are videos that you took? Yeah, I think so, probably. All righty, then. 
Well, that's grown folks' business. Y'all grow. <laughs> so, in addition to the phone check, a member of your team also conducted a polygraph of Ms. Alejandro. Is that correct? That's correct, Your Honor. And you have those results? Yes, ma'am. I have those results with me. So, Ms. Alejandro was asked, have you had sexual intercourse with your ex-boyfriend during the three years you've been with Mr. Crawford? What was her response? Your Honor, her response was no. What did the polygraph determine? The lie detector determined that she was being truthful. All right. So far, I see smiles. <laughs> Still one more, I think, right? It's relief. What I see is relief and relief. smiles, yeah. Ms. Alejandro was asked, have you had sexual intercourse with any other men during the three years you and Mr. Crawford have been together? What was her response to that question? Her response was no. What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined that she was being truthful. You all, you started out dating, and then you got married, and then you got divorced. Yes. And you started dating again. <laughs> and so this off again, on again, off again relationship is going to be off permanently because of what's going on in your relationship right now. Well, Your Honor, I need to know for sure if he's cheating because I pretty much know for a fact that he is, but I need to know the truth before I marry him again. He's asked me to marry him, and I need to know the truth. I mean, I, I, I've seen so many things. She thinks so many no, things. No, no, I've seen... So you need to know so what... I've seen people on the back of your motorcycle. Miss Perkins, Miss Perkins, Miss found... Perkins. Hold on, hold on. You need to know once and for all whether he's cheating or not before this relationship is going any further. Yes, sir. We talked about you all being on again, off again, on again. You're here fighting for this relationship that's lasted for 30 years. Really? Yeah. So on again, off again, on again, off. I mean, this is a long-term relationship, and you want to see it continue. Yeah, and I'm not, I'm not the one here saying blah 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 blah. When she, you know, she's done her dirt, and I, I, I've that, never that, cheated. that stuff, that stuff when we were separated, that's where it stays. But we wasn't but together. We weren't together when most of the stuff she's talking about. No, yes, we was. Here's the thing: if y'all been on and off and on and off for 30 years, there was some point, like at the beginning, when it was good. Oh, yeah, Tell me how you met. Good. Tell me how you all got together. We got, well, we was really young. We used to go bahan, swimming, you know, everything. What was that first thing? Hot bahan and Wh trucks. What is that? Where you go into mud and, you know, just do a bunch of... Off-road. Yeah, Off-road running and, you know. So look, how look, did... look how young they look. How young and innocent <laughs> and happy they look. Yeah, yeah, no that's clue. What she, that's when she wasn't delusional. Oh. That's oh. when she wasn't delusional. Was... Yeah. Well, well, we're, we're going to find out whether you've driven her to be delusional or not. <laughs> all right, so in the beginning, you all are together? Yeah, we had it great. And then what happened? Um, it was on the news that he had died. So, um... Yeah. yeah. What? He was in a car wreck. Um, it's, the motor went, sent him into the trunk, and they, they pronounced him dead on the scene. So I, I thought he was dead, and, you know, after a while, I had to move on. How long did you think he was dead? Uh, for about three years, because he was in a coma. <laughs> Yeah. I was, I was, I was, yeah. I was really bad. Yeah, he up. was in a coma. Um, his and I don't get along, so of course she would not call me to tell me that he wasn't. How did you find out he was alive? Well, he came into my place of employment. Okay, wait a minute. Wait well, a minute. Wait a minute. You think he's dead for three years and he walks into your job? Yes, I about hit my knees, Your Honor. That, that I thought dead. I was delusional. I can't even get my mind around... What I did you say to him? She, she, what she, did she you missed say? out on court, too. Before I walked in, I sent a friend of mine in because I didn't know. We was driving around. I hadn't been, you know, around because I, I lost memory and I was, you know, messed up physically and everything. And I said, I said, man, what's the chance of her still being at this place? So and, you, were, you were just thinking, maybe I can find her. Yeah. And she was a part of your life that you wanted to get back. Mm -hmm. I didn't remember much before that or, or anything either. Wow, that's am that is amazing. Yeah. So how did you move from... He is back in my life. You reconnect and you get married. Yeah. 
Okay, tell me about how your marriage was. Was it a good marriage? Uh, yeah, it was a good marriage. We got married in the backyard. Um, <laughs> we had a shotgun wedding, pit bulls, you know. Yeah, and... Um, so, and, you, you're married, it's mm -hmm. good, but yeah. you're divorced. So, how? what happened well, to that? Um, <laughs> well, New Year's Eve, probably about 2007. I was set up. No, you was not set up. Hold, hold on, hold on. Let okay. me hear. Let me hear what I, she has I come to say. Out, I come out of the bedroom, and he's making out with a family member of mine. No, no. Yes. Okay, no. now we're on the couch. No. Now, Miss Perkins, hold on. Wow. All right. No. So yes. Making out. This happened on no. New Year's Eve. Yes. Okay. And New Year's Eve is just one of those times where you hug and kiss people. She didn't just say we hugging and kissing. She said make it out, and there's a difference. A okay. hug and a kiss is brief. You keep, keep moving she, on. Make it out is involved. So how long do you think they no, were making she, out? She, she, used, she hold on, hold on, Mr. telling how long they were making out before I walked in and caught him. There wasn't, there wasn't no how long. It's how, it's, it's, it's who's to say how far they would have went if I wouldn't have walked in. Okay, so Mr. Gusman, Please. she says New Year's Eve, you were making out with somebody. Oh, no. What is it that actually happened it in your mind? It was that quick. It was that quick. Mr. Gusman, you keep saying you weren't making out. No, man. Show Girl. me with Miss, with Miss Perkins what you were doing. I would say Rob, but Rob will not right. let that happen. <laughs> she, she come at me. Like, she come at me like this, and then it was like, and I pushed her away. It that was like, quick. It, it was that quick. It was All that right. fast. And now, then Ms. Parkins, you been... show me what you thought you, what, what he, what oh you saw. Oh, my <laughs> Jesus. Okay, no, go ahead. I want to see it. It was like, no, 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 no. Oh. Oh, there, that's a big difference, Mr. Cullen. Yeah. Well, that was involved. There was some head yes. There was all of that. It yeah, sounds like a little tongue involved. Oh, there was a lot. That's why, yeah. Oh, no, boy. No. And, you know, I mean, Miss Perkins, no. she, she knows the difference between a, a peck and making out. I mean, I, I'm, I'm I, give, I'll give her the benefit of the doubt. So, after that, did you get divorced? Yes. That was what led to the yes. divorce. You were like, I'm out. I'm done. I don't need a cheater. Why would he go through all this to get back with you just to cheat on you, if, especially if he knows that's what happened in the past that got you divorced? So my question to you is, what have you seen that makes you think he's cheating now? Oh, yeah, he came in smelling like cheap perfume. Exhaust. Cheap perfume. Exhaust. Okay, and what did you say at that point? I said, who you been with? And what did he say? He said, nobody. I said, well, that's awful funny because I just seen you with the <laughs> on the back of your motorcycle. Dark hair? Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, so he drives right past you. There's a woman on the back yeah, of his like bike. I not notice. Did he see you? I'm sure he did. No. Okay. No, All right. Is this somebody know. you knew? Huh? No, I did not recognize her. Okay, what does she look it. like? Uh, dark hair. That's all I could really tell because she was holding on to him. Okay. She was hugging him. Yeah. But what's wrong? I, if I was hiding it, why would I drive by the corner store, which everybody in that neighborhood knows everybody. Everybody in that neighborhood, they're, they're busybodies. They're going to run and tell her. I mean, so it could have been anybody. I'm not going to hide it. I went right by it because I had nothing to hide. So now that takes us then to well, her side, his side, and the woman on the back of the bike. She's here to testify. Right with his corner in. Yes, sir. Oh, my God. Right up here. Hi. Good day. Hi. Would you please state your name for the record? Christy Kahn. And you well, wait, just... hold on. Let me let me establish something. Okay. Miss Perkins, is this the woman you saw on the yes. back of the bike? So this is her. Yes. Okay. All right. What is your relationship with Mr. Gusman? He's like my brother. I've known him for a hundred years. It just seems like forever. Well, then He's how come like I've never friend. met you? I don't because I. You guys are conflict. <laughs> I'm gonna cut to the chase on this one. Have you had sexual relations with Mr. Gusman? Mm, oh, never. Ew. He's like my brother. Ew. She already thinks that I am, and I'm no, not. No, I'm not. I'm not worried about you because you don't owe me nothing. It's this man that owes it to me. You're right. I would not be mad at you at all. <laughs> I agree. I agree. Yes. So, Miss Perkins, you're not blaming Miss Khan for no. anything. No, she don't owe me nothing. But, it's him. But okay, Mr. Gusman, but see, he's the I one that you're looking at, her. right? Yeah. I can't speak for her, so I figured. She's saying that I was doing something with her. She can come and say the same thing. I'm saying no. But you know what? In our court file, we have a note that there's a relationship between you all two. We're and in this relationship. I, We're like friends. We're brothers. No, it, it, it refers to something else. So we're going to have a member of our court personnel come out and explain what we have here. Okay. Ron, would you escort Miss Harold in? Yes, Your Honor. Miss <laughs> Harold. 
hamster brain. Hi, Miss Harrell. Would you please state your name for the court record? Yes, my name is Dominique Carell. And, and you're a member of our court personnel? Yes. All right. You, during your investigation for this case, uncovered some important information. Can you share that with the court? Yes, absolutely. During my investigation, I discovered that Mr. Gusman and Mrs. Khan are actually really good friends. They're very close. However, I also discovered that they both share a phone bill together. Oh, I mean, they have a family plan together, and I discovered I that because I was trying to get in contact with both of them. Ms. Khan informed me that her phone was going to be turned off, but I said, how am I going to get in contact with you? She said, well, we need to get our phone bill paid. And I'm like, who's we? You know, like, I, I didn't understand who's we if I'm only talking to you. And she said, me and Mr. Gus. That's how I discovered how they had a phone bill together. Huh. That's something. Thank you. You're welcome. Ms. Perkins, did you know about <laughs> <No>. this? <laughs> what does this make you think? Oh, I'm, I'm... My ears are on fire. Okay, can, can, can... <laughs> okay, listen, listen, listen. All right, okay, Mr. Gus, but I really do want to listen. Tell me yeah. why you two share a phone plan, okay, a I family could, plan. I could pay... I could pay $75 for my phone by itself. Uh -huh. Or when I added her, or I could add you or anybody else here, and it makes it cheaper. Okay, well, what about me? Okay, <laughs> I said I'd get you a phone. Look, I understand that, so let me ask, is... Is Miss Perkins on your phone plan? No. When okay, I, when all I right. Put her on it, so, yeah. I mean, I put... I understand. I mean, I, my first question is, Miss Perkins on your phone plan, you said no. So the second question is, out of all the people in the world you could add to your phone plan, you added Miss Khan. She didn't have a phone. I'm a real simple person. She didn't have a phone. She needed a phone. I could save money. Bang, here it is. You understand how that looks, though, right, Mr. Gusman? Uh, no, because I'm not doing nothing. Again, like I said, I'm not doing nothing wrong. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. So... Uh-uh. Uh-uh. And, 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 okay, no. and hold on. Wait, can I say this, please? No. <laughs> Do you understand how this looks to Miss Perkins? Yes, I do. Okay. And that's where you keep messing up. The excuse of I'm not doing anything, but it looks like you're doing something. When that's I, the problem. But when I put her on the phone plan, we weren't talking. Let, let's let Miss Harold go back to work at the, for the court. All right. Thank you so much for that clarification, love. You're welcome. All right. Thank you. So here's the deal. And here's where we are. We have, you smell cheap perfume on him. And you're like, who is this? You saw him giving a woman a ride down the street. The woman now is identified as Miss Khan. We find out that he has a family plan, a phone family plan with Miss Khan. All of these things all together have you thinking, is he cheated again? Do I want to marry him? Do I want to be done with him? Is that true? That's correct. And if you find out that he is in fact cheating... Oh, it's a wrap. You're done. Done. Forever and ever, yeah. world without end. Forever. There will not be no... <laughs> she can find them. And Mr. Gusman, just to be clear, you're telling this court and you're telling Ms. Perkins that you have not been physically intimate with any other women since you two got back together. Sir. All right. Well, it's all on the line, Mr. Cutler. We want to help you all resolve your issue. And so this court has done a full and complete investigation. At this time, we're going to call former military interrogator Lena Sesco to determine, is he cheating? Don, please report Ms. Sesco in. Ms. Sesco, get off to the monitor. Hi, Ms. Sisko. Hi, how are you, Your Honor? Fine, how are you? I am doing well. So, Ms. Sisko, tell us what you did to investigate this case. Yes, Your Honor. I first had the accused write a witness statement, and I analyzed that for any indicators of truthfulness and deception. I studied the case file, I put together an interrogation plan, and then I interrogated Mr. Gusman to see if he was cheating on Ms. Perkins. So, what were your initial findings when you co completed your investigation? While I was questioning Mr. Gusman, I was looking for indicators of deception. And he told me that he's never talked about his relationship in this amount of detail before with anybody. And that it made him think of a few things that he hadn't thought of before. So what did you learn? Mr. Gusman said that he brought Ms. Khan on to prove to Ms. Perkins that he's not cheating with her or with anybody. But he also told me that he may think that Ms. Khan wants more than just a friendship with him. <laughs> oh. 
Oh. All right. Then I asked him if he wanted to spend the rest of his life with Miss Perkins. And he gave me a definitive yes. And he was also congruent when he said that because his head nodded yes. But he did caveat that. He said, and I'm going to read it because I'm quoting him, if she stops worrying about the stuff that has never happened. Ah. And finally, <laughs> I've conducted hundreds of interrogations since 2002. And when I was interrogating Mr. Gusman, I saw no signs of deception. So he told me that he hasn't been cheating. I believe him. I believe he's being truthful. And again, I think he is being honest and he has not cheated on Ms. Perkins. <laughs> All right. Ms. Perkins? Yes, sir. How do you feel about that? Oh, well, I'm happy to hear that. Because you came in to get some answers, right? Yes. And you got answers and they were favorable answers. Right. All right, so what we need to talk about is having some trust. Yeah. So, you all are reestablishing a 30-year-old relationship. You have got to let the past go. You can't expect him to continue to want to be with you and share with you if he's always under a cloud of suspicion. Yes, ma'am. Now that you have been... Uh, determined to have been truthful, do you still want to continue in the relationship with Miss Perkins? Yeah. Do you still yes, want to marry her? Yeah. Do you still want to spend the rest of your life with Absolutely. her? Absolutely. Miss Perkins, you ready to say I do? Sure. You gonna do it? Yeah. That's the most convincing testimony ever. <laughs> <laughs> you all are living together, and it's my understanding from the court papers, you fell in love on the job. Tell me about that, Miss Wilkes. Okay, well, I drive cabs. Um, I usually drive at nighttime. So I got a call one night to pick up someone. So I went to go pick him up and I was taking him somewhere. Um, we was just basically conversing, you know, getting to know each other just through me driving the cab. And then I found out that, um, he was interested. He was asking me all kind of different questions. We found out that we share the same birth date. So that's kind of what brought us together. Like, we was the same age, same day. Um, so we just started talking from that point. So that was more than just a cab ride right there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you can say that. So how did you go from a cab ride to living together? I always say he kind of snuck in. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> How did he sneak in? Uh, he brought his clothes over there to wash and dry. And when he brought his clothes, they just never left. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, Mr. Dixon, were you, were you sneaking in? I was just like, hey, let's go with it then, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna leave my clothes here as long as possible until you tell me to get my stuff and go, you know? <laughs> so, when did you realize that you were falling for him? When well, he gave me some money to get my hair did. <laughs> All right. This is a nice, pragmatic relationship. I like that. I, Washing clothes, you know, got to get my hair done, here's some money. That's a nice, pragmatic relationship. I like that. She do for me, I can do for her. Yeah. What is it about her made you say, this, this, this has legs right here. This is somebody I could maybe be with. Well, I started feeling her. She's like, she could cook, and I like to eat. You know, the way she smiled at me, the way she was talking to me. You know, it's like the conversation she was giving me, it seemed like she was a real woman by her character, how she was talking, you know? She bought me a little turtle, you know? Is that the little turtle? You know, she bought me a little turtle <laughs> for a little birthday trip. We took a uh, Daytona or whatever. So I was like, that's what's up. Because we were supposed to be getting shirts. Somehow she just bought me a turtle and she was like, I'm gonna name it Reggie. <laughs> okay. So Reggie the yeah. turtle. Nothing um... says love like a turtle. <laughs> I mean, come on now. It is cute, but seriously, why a turtle? <laughs> the turtles was cheaper than the shirts. <laughs> <laughs> this is a pragmatic woman. I uh, love it. So, Ms. Wilkes, how do you go from buying a turtle... A love turtle. A love turtle. <laughs> yeah. ...to being in court today? Why are you here? I want to know what's going on. I just want to know if he's actually being involved with someone else. So you think he's cheating? Basically, yeah. The way he moved, the way he act, the things that he do, the things that I have found and stuff like that. Okay. Now, Mr. Dixon, 
Are you cheating? I ain't cheating at all. It's like, I come from work sometimes, and sometimes I feel like she'll smell me. She, like, did it about twice. I say, okay, what does that look part. like? She smells my private part. They're thinking I've been cheating. Trust she me, right? smells your private part? Yeah, she don't smell it twice, about twice. Okay, what does that look like when you come I, in? I don't like that, you know, because I, I feel like I'm sweating and everything from work and everything. Well, I'm gonna go and have sex with somebody and after this guy work, you know, sweaty. Okay, okay wait, 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 okay, hold on. Oh, wait, wait, wait. No, I, you, know? uh, you walk in the house and immediately your girlfriend smells your privates. Yeah. It's like when you come in the house, she's like, where you been? I'm like, I've been hanging out with the fellas after work, you know, around to the corner to the bar. She was like, and you come in the house this time of night? She was like, let me smell your... I, I let her know, I let her, but I don't like that. Wait so when he hits the door, you just say, drop him. No, I be like, let me smell your penis. <laughs> and you sniff it. I took a whiff. <laughs> oh, come on, man. <laughs> Seriously? Seriously. Uh, <laughs> I, yeah. I don't, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna, gonna let touch that. One that. Go. I'm gonna yeah. let that one go. Let, let it right. there. Have you found any physical evidence of why you believe Mr. Dixon is cheating? Okay, one day I was going to the dollar store, just one Sunday morning. Usually, I put my bags in the front seat with me. Some say, put them in the back seat. So I go to put them in the back seat, and I see a little gold shimmering thing on the floor. And it's a piece of condom wrapper. Oh! I have, I also have the picture of it, because I took the picture. Oh, okay. Ron, would you please get that yes, uh, piece of evidence, please? Thank you, ma'am. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Okay, so what I'm looking at is 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 this your hand holding the condom That's wrapper? That's my hand holding it. And this is in your car. In my car, in the back seat of the driver's side. It's only two people that drive my car. That's me, and that's him. It's not mine, so it must be his. And so you believe, based on finding this in your car, mm -hmm. that he had sex in your car? Either he had sex in my car, or he had sex at their house one and brought the condom and left it on the floor. Because he's always dropping <coughs> things from out his pocket. And it goes in the back seat on the floor. His comb, chapstick, change. So, what was your explanation for her finding this in her car? It's not mine, and I'm gonna say it like this here. Anything could happen. It's like the window could be down, you know, something could fly in there, you know. Okay, what are you anything. driving? I don't, it just could have been anything. I don't think that could have been out of my pocket. To, That's I just have, the top of a condom, now. There ain't no whole look, condom, right? I have driven a lot of cars in my life, I've driven a lot of miles. Right. I can honestly say never. that I've never, ever. never, ever in the history ever. of car driving had a condom wrapper fly in my window. <laughs> yeah. Well. <laughs> Okay, well, his brother was staying with us. I don't remember the time of night it was, but I had done went to sleep. I woke up, it was just his brother in the living room by himself. So I was like, well, where's Reggie? He was like, oh, I don't know, I don't know. So he getting his phone all nervous. So I was like, hmm, let me put my inspector gadget hat on. So I get my cell phone and I go on his online banking and I see different withdrawals from the bank. And then I see the hotel. So you go on your phone and you see a hotel charge? Yes, I do. For that night? For that night. So then what do you do? Well, I'm calling him, I'm texting. His phone must be dead because it's going straight to voicemail. So I'm sitting around. It's like 2 o'clock in the morning. He didn't get in till like 6 o'clock. And so that's when it... You know, I made up a little story about, oh, well, you know, such and such told me that they seen you at the hotel, you know, just to get him to tell on himself. And so that's when he admitted that he was at the hotel, but then he said, you know, he came up with this bogus story about how he got it for somebody else. Mr. Dixon, you were at a hotel at 2 o'clock in the morning and your girlfriend didn't know about it. Well, it's like 3 something in the morning. I got a call from a friend. She was in a situation. And I was like, that friend right there been before her. I haven't met her. So... I was, like, looking out for a friend, so got a room for her and her boyfriend. But she got a boyfriend. What's she need well, a room for? Well, the boyfriend yeah. must be, don't got a job, must be, and he can't afford a room because they ain't had no way to go. So I was like, I had some money in my pocket. She look out for me, I'm gonna look out for her. So, but here's Somebody the thing, she was out. calling you. Why didn't you answer your phone? My phone was dead at the time. Let, let me ask you something. Is this a woman you had been intimate with in the past? I was once, twice. Uh -huh. 
But that was in the past. That's in the past, though. Right. But, like, you know, that's a friendship. You know, it's sometimes things happen. And, you know, when you're in lonely nights, you know, mm-hmm. sometimes, you know, you got, a, you got a friend, you know, just hang out, and some things just happen at that moment. And but you didn't like, tell me at that help. point in time. You didn't tell me. I didn't want to let her know, because <laughs> I, I would let her know. She would think that so something was going on So that's why there's no so trust, what? because <laughs> you didn't tell me. And you don't believe any of it? No, they could have been having a threesome for all I know. No, I don't believe it. Mr. Dixon, I got to say, is, is not looking good. But here's the thing. We have his side, we have her side, and we have the woman in the hotel side. Ron, would you please escort the witness in? Yes, sir. Miss <laughs> Milton, Mr. Dixon says he got a hotel for you and your boyfriend. Is that correct? <laughs> no. OK. Who did he get the hotel room for? It was about my boyfriend, but my boyfriend was not there. A friend of his was there, though. A friend of whose? His. Mr. Mr. Dixon? Dixon? Yes. Mr. Dixon, who was there with you all? It was me, her, and my brother. How hard is that? Okay. So why was your brother there? Because he was the driver for me, and he left. So then it was just you two there? Yes. Were like... you intimate with Miss Milton no, I the wasn't. night in question? No, I wasn't. Miss Wilkes, do you believe this? I see the expression on your face. No, not really. What are you thinking? That they were intimate that night? Miss Milton. Were you intimate with Mr. Dixon that night? The God on his truth, I cannot answer that. He's right. I don't the, the circumstances surrounded around my boyfriend. Like, we were going through something, and I went to my go-to guy. That's Reggie. I'm, I, he comes to me when he has stuff. That's what it is. We're friends. Like, we gonna always be friends. I can't, I can't even sit here and tell you that we did or that we did not. Not that particular night, no. I was crying and drunk. I have no way of knowing. None. But it's a possibility. Yes, it is. And you have been intimate with Mr. Dixon in the past. Yes. And so, you're in a hotel room with a woman that you used to be intimate with, but You've she... already lied about the fact that her boyfriend was there when he wasn't, and you're telling this court that nothing happened? Nothing happened. Miss right, Wilkes, so... what are you thinking right now? I'm disgusted. And I that's, can see I, that. I, one thing I hate is a liar, because I'm too real. Everything that ever happens to me, whether a guy or a girl or whoever try to talk to me, he knows it. You know, he's, he's seen it. My phone is not locked. I don't have nothing to hide. So I feel like if something is going on or something did go on, we wasn't having no problems because the relationship was fresh. So if he did, I'm disgusted. All right. Well, to get the answer, the court has retained the services of private investigator and certified polygraph examiner Patrick Coffey. Ron, would you please escort Mr. Coffey into the courtroom? Yes, sir. How are you, Mr. Coffee? I'm doing great, ma'am. And you? We're good. Thank you. Mr. Coffey, uh, what did you do to investigate this case? A member of our team conducted a full forensic analysis of Mr. Dixon's phone. He was able to recover current and deleted messages, browser history, photos, and videos. So what did your team uncover? According to my team's finding, the three most used applications were Facebook, Twitter, and Chatterbait. What is Chatterbait? Chatterbait is a live adult video chat room. On this application, a viewer can interact with live sex streaming by adding their suggestions in an open forum. Mr. Dixon, Chatterbait. I don't know what Chatterbait is. You've never never heard heard of Chatterbait. Chatterbait. It's on your phone. Well, I ain't never look at no child bait in my phone, so I don't know what it could be. All right, did you find anything else of interest on Mr. Dixon's phone? Oh, yes. Tell us about that. Our team was able to uncover more than a dozen naked photos. Some were nude photos, and others were photos of two or more people engaging in sexual activities. Mr. Dixon, who are these people that you have photos on your phone engaging in sexual activity? Well, I look at porn, so I might could screenshot something or I might could have been saving videos in my phone because, you know, you could download them videos in your phone, so could have been downloaded videos and no telling because I ain't had none of that 
So I don't know none of that is. So these are downloaded videos of strangers. Exactly. Might be strangers, yeah, because they ain't nothing me. I don't recall myself. <laughs> oh. Okay. All right, so Mr. Coffee, after examining these photos and videos, was Mr. Dixon in any of those pictures or videos? According to our findings, Mr. Dixon was not in any of the photos, and we believe that these are downloads from pornographic sites. So, Ms. Wilkes, did you know about these things in his phone? I mean, I know he watched porn in his phone, but I didn't know he'd be screenshotting and saving pictures. <laughs> To further investigate this, the court also ordered Mr. Dixon to undergo a polygraph examination, correct? Yes, sir. You asked him a number of questions. The first was, the night you were in the hotel, did you have sexual intercourse with Miss Milton? What was his response? He answered no. What did the lie detector determine? And the polygraph determined he was being truthful. Ms. Wilkes, tell me what you're thinking right now. I mean, just because he told the truth, uh, uh, because he was being truthful about them not being intimate, you still was there and you still lied about it. So that don't make me feel no better. Mr. Dick, do you see the concern th that this has caused? I see that, and I know I made a mistake by not telling her at the time, but I'm just here to let her know, like, she done got the answers she need to know, and she can trust me again. All right. And there was one last question. Since moving in with Ms. Wilkes, have you had sexual intercourse with any woman other than her? What was his response? He answered no. What did the lie detector determine? The polygraph determined he was being truthful. <laughs> Ms. Wilkes, any relationship has got to be built on trust. And, I mean, you are met in a cab, but now you're driving him away because you don't trust him. You've got to trust him. He's told you, and you knew this when you, when you met him. He's a, an outgoing person, but that doesn't necessarily mean something's going on. Well, let me well, just say this, Mr. Dixon. You need to do some things to build her faith in you. Clearly, you love her. And even though she's trying to hold it back, she loves you, too. Yeah, because she knows I could cook But you need too. to move forward. <laughs> now, what is it that you want to do with your relationship? I mean, now that I know the truth, Yes, ma'am. I guess I'm willing to work past it as long as he could be... continue to be honest with me from this day forward. You all have been in a long-term relationship together. You have one child. You appeared in paternity court before Judge Lauren Lake to resolve paternity issues, but the allegations of cheating were not resolved, and she ordered you to appear here in couples court. Ms. Heath, tell us why you're here. I'm here because the man that I've been with for a year and a half, I believe he's cheating. All right, so if you find out he's cheating, then what? I, Your Honor, always... I got to move on with my life. I've been through this too many times to keep going through it again. I have four kids. Oh, okay. And I've, I've took it on, led him in my life and my kids' life. And so, yeah, it's a problem if he's cheating. It and is. I see the emotion it's the problem, you. but that's the whole thing. She keep comparing me to her exes. I'm not her exes. I'm the next you know man, what? the best man. You I can say, me? I ain't none of that, man. I can say I came into this is. relationship man, way better with trust issues. Let that me, you I, got. I, I'm, I'm aware of that. That you got. I gave him the chance to prove himself, but when you put you when I when I see things that have me, you know, wondering what you're doing, of course I'm gonna I'm gonna have more trust issues than than what I came in. So with. what's at stake here? I mean, your whole relationship. The whole oh, Sure. Is at stake. The whole yeah. relationship. And he doesn't see how this is affecting you. No. Because I'm seeing the emotion in your face. I'm seeing the tears in your eyes. Do you see this? I do, but I, that's not me hurting her. That's herself hurting her. He's to oh, comparing me to, compa to compare me to your exes and your last people. So that's yourself to, hurting yourself. To other women, Mr. Milner. That's myself. Mr. Milner. Oh, okay. I want you to look at me. Look right at me. Yes, sir. Do you understand what's at stake here? Yes, sir, I do. You understand your relationship is on the line that if you are determined to be cheating, she's gone. If, but I'm not. So, therefore, well, I'm not worried about nothing. All right, Ms. Heath, you have said you have overwhelming evidence to support that Mr. Milner is, in fact, cheating. Tell us about the warning sign. Yes, ma'am. I found... I found things... It, I mean, for instance, this comb right here, 
first of all, I have natural hair. Do you think this gonna get through my hair? <laughs> no, it's no, it's not. No, it's not. This not comb does not. My... I go to comb my child's hair, and I'm like, look, go get a comb because he knows where everything is. I'm like, okay, who comb is this? I'm like, this ain't this ain't mine. Like, it's gonna. And so, where did you? Through my hair. If I if I try to comb my hair with this, you you need a wide tooth. Comb. I need a wide tooth comb. I got you. I, I may not you. have a lot of hair, but even a wide uh, uh, one of these ain't gonna get through that. I got I... thick hair. All right, uh, so... And, and it don't look like it's gonna go through your hair either. At all. <laughs> exactly. He's supposed yeah. to be trying to grow dreads. How you gonna comb your hair? All right, all right whose so... comb is that, Mr. Milner? Casper the Friendly Ghost, you ask me. I don't oh, know. Oh, really? <laughs> what else you got? Okay, let me tell you. Oh. This bandana, let me tell you. Because I be cooking, you know, I be in the kitchen whipping. But I was throwing something away and I just so happened to see this little piece of the corner, uh, a cloth hanging out. I'm like, what is this? I opened up, I'm like, oh, this cute. Why is this in here? You know, but it don't belong to me. It's cute and all, but why, did, why is it in here? You know, like, so I asked him about it and he's like, I don't know. I don't never know. He, he just never knows. Hey, Mr. Cobb, let me just say this to you. Women know what's there. Exactly. I mean, that's you what know I'm what saying. comb you they use. Know exactly you know what's what the ban- bandanas you wrap your hair with. How she with. know it ain't exactly. nobody else? It ain't though. gonna be no surprise. How well, she know it ain't nobody else? Ever, who, who has she done? Don't nobody ever say she do like have those. Mr. Mr. Milner. Else is it gonna be? But you don't know where it came from. No, I do not. Okay. Not only that, Your Honor, this man come up with condoms that we don't even use. Oh. Well, what do you? What do you mean? So I go through the I go through the wall and I'm like, okay, there's a condom in here. Well, what, what, I'm pregnant. So what are we using condoms for? Like I, I don't we don't use condoms. He's like, oh, just in case, just in case what? What? I ain't say we no just in case. I ain't say no just in case. I ain't say no just oh, in case. Just okay. in case we want you know you want to um, use condoms. Nah. Pass down, so, pass down. So, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I ain't say no oh, just in case. Time. Girl, What's you time? need to stop. All right, Mr. Milner. All right. So why do you have a condom in your wallet? It's my, it's my little family member. It's a family member. He's of age. He don't want his mama to know what's going on. That's it. That's all. I'm just thinking if he's helping this family member out, he would have it more his than one time. His family member is overgrown. Why do you hold a... Why is you holding a condom for a grown well, man? I think, I think if you grown enough to do that and need a condom, you hold it grown enough to hold, so your hold it condom. on your own. You don't need nobody to do that. You don't want some people, if y'all want, you know, certain people to find out about it, then I'm that type of person I hold it for you. They got a whole four bedroom house. Mr. Milner's a Why? kind, caring person, you know, because everybody won't hold a con for everybody else. Thank so. you. He, he's a kind person. Yeah, he's nice. a giver, is what he's, you say. He's said. a giver. He's exactly. a friendly no, I mean, you, yeah. you, you got the comb, you got the bandana, you got the condom. And not is only it... that, we got a name tag. Tell me there's oh. what? Yes. I, I, I find all kinds of things in my house that it just don't, that just don't belong to me. It just appear out of nowhere. Let me show you, let me show you what this name tag look like. This. I'm like, oh, this place is in Dallas. So this is where all Rico's exes are. Dallas just happens to be the place where, where he all his exes everybody are. Everybody up under the sun. Well, you know that song, said, All My Exes Live in Texas? Well, all his exes yes, live in Dallas. Yes, yes. And it just so happened to be Dallas, Texas. I don't know what she's talking about. I'm not no disrespectful type of person like that. The game is chess, not chess. Oh, you're not disrespectful. No, I'm not but disrespectful. You're not disrespectful. But Mr. Milner, but you got two whatsoever. women in my inbox talking about they pregnant. Oh! Two women who are in your inbox claiming that they're pregnant. Yes, I don't know these women from Adam and Eve. Let me... Oh, my God. Hold on, let me she show you got what more I got. Stuff out of there. Mm-hmm. She's finding combs, <laughs> bandanas, and condoms. Tell Rico to call me. He has 30 minutes to call, or I'm gonna go through with this pregnancy, and the next time he hears from me, it will be from child support. Oh. Rob, could you hand that to us, please? Thank you, ma'am. We big at a how long and child support still ain't here yet. So um, you get this in your inbox. Yes, ma'am. Then she proceeds to say, okay, I'm, not, I'm gonna call you. It's not gonna be on no beef. So let me call. I let her call. You know, I want to know everything. You gonna tell me? Let me let me hear it. So, so you, you, you so talk this to this woman. woman? I talked to this and woman for an hour, and, and she happened? had a lot to say. She knew information about uh, about my man that shouldn't that she shouldn't even know about. Everybody want to be my queen. Like I say, the game is chess. It's not checkers. Okay, okay. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Mr. Milner. I'm all about that, man. M- Mr. Milner, the only kind of woman who can send this message is somebody that you've been with. Exactly. Hey, and he, I'm and not he even... Hold on. It probably was somebody I've been with before I met that. her. He tells okay, this woman... She okay, said... but a pregnancy only lasts nine months. Exactly. And, and, and so... And we still ain't seen no baby, no child support, and she ain't getting back up yet. But not only that, Your Honor, he tells this woman... So instead of telling her... Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. 
Here's the thing. You <laughs> keep talking about in the past. This hey. woman is contacting your girlfriend now, saying she's pregnant now, which means that you had sex with her now. So that's the problem. I have not been with nobody but my queen. That's it. That's all. Is there a particular woman that you've ever been worried about? A particular one? Huh. He should know Miss Particular. Who? Her name is Roslyn. She... I, I feel like I have been in a polygamous relationship that I did not sign up for. Okay. And this is breaking you up. Because I'm not like that with him. I'm honest. I do everything. You know everything about me. I have never made you feel like there was another person. So why would you do it to me? And you believe he's cheating with her? I do. And you think this has been going on the entire relationship? And I do. Because she's been <laughs> around since the entire relationship. Oh. Rising like my first love on some things, you know? She's your first love. Is she con your continuing love? Not no continuing love, no, sir. Just a friend. Are you... Have you been intimate with her since you've been with Miss Heath? No, sir. Have you I've been in intimate with that woman one time in my whole lifetime. That's what he said. And that's when we was... But how young. do you... I had to sneak through the window type. You know what I'm saying? So, how since you... you've been with Miss Heath, you've not had any kind of sexual relationship, no. sexual contact no. with Rosalind? No. <laughs> well, you know, in this courtroom, there's your side, his side, there's her side, and then there's the other woman's side. We have Rosalind here. <laughs> Yes, y'all. I'm not oh, going to oh, oh, man, you, you said it now, huh? Oh, OK. <laughs> We're going to go straight oh, up. Oh, 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 why is she cute? Oh, why is she here? <laughs> why is she here? Oh. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. OK. You're coming to the bench, ma'am. Thank you. She, yeah, because she, she, she ain't going to make it there. She keeps that up. Would you state your name, please, for the court record? Rosalind Evans. Okay, Ms. Evans, what do you have to say about all this? Okay. Well, first of all, I have been, like, in y'all's, you know, like, relationship. I, oh, no, never that. Uh, yeah, aside. Never that. Hold on, Ms. Heath. Okay. We want to uh, get her testimony. I have been, like, through y'all's relationship, mm -hmm. and uh, it's because I'm his best friend. Mm -hmm. Always will be in your relationship. Mm -hmm. Sorry. We have seen each other recently. It was a couple months ago. Hmm. It, oh. And when you say you've seen each other, oh, what does that okay. mean? I went up to his oh, job. Oh, but you did surprise. What you just said? I surprised him at his job. What is that supposed to mean? She surprised you ain't me say, at my oh, job. I didn't, didn't know that. nothing but about the situation. But you didn't say that. For what? For but you, you didn't, didn't say go that. crazy. Exactly. Go crazy because it ain't supposed to be happening. Miss E, you came here to hear. You're not listening. What happened when you went to visit him? He came to me, gave me a hug. We gave each other a hug, but that was it. So, do you still have feelings for him? I'll always love him. I will. <laughs> do you have feelings for her? As a friend, that's it. That's all. So here's the question. Did you tell Miss Heath that Miss Evans came to see you that day? Did you just see how she reacted? Imagine if y'all wasn't here and this Baylor wasn't here. Okay, so that's a no. That's a, that's a hard no. That's a, a hard, hard no. no. That's a hard no. What? Man, so, that go, man. We'll be still fighting right now to this But you think it's better to lie? I didn't lie. Oh, I you think it's better? You, 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 that's nothing. the same thing as lying. No, it's not. It is to me. Because I gotta say, based on what I'm seeing, I understand why I didn't tell you. I ain't saying it's right, but I understand. Oh. Because you don't trust him. Oh. I, I gotta say something to you. Go ahead. You say that you love him yes. as a friend. Yes. But you see what your relationship is doing to his relationship with this woman who he has a child with. She don't that's care. That, she don't care about her own. Let me finish. And I'm saying to you, if you were a real friend, you back down. Because she you don't want to be a friend. I want she you to be the woman. Heath, I want she you to be quiet. Yeah, I don't care. You can have it Here's at this point. Here's the thing, though. I am a good friend to him. And I actually have backed off a lot. Whenever they're having a the little issue, he calls me. If I did want him in that type of way, I can have him. Yeah. Yeah, I can have him if I want him. Mm. I have no beef with you at all. I don't even know your name. Girl, it's gonna forever be beef because you was always in the mix of this. You didn't care about his happiness. You didn't care about my happiness. I Ain't did. never gonna be no friendship in that. Oh, I didn't say I just, I just don't, friend. I just don't, I just don't feel like that. He has a, a, a friend that's a girl. I don't have a problem with that because I'm not an insecure female. But when you got somebody like you who think you can have something, that just because you want it, you don't even care about your own life. I don't think I. You don't know. care about your own life. All right, so, yeah. Yeah.
I, I think we've heard, I think we've heard enough evidence. I mean, given everything we've seen, it's almost like this seems like it's a done deal. Seems. And she and said if, bed, the if it comes anybody. out that he's cheating, you're gone. Am I right? I'm gone. I mean, at this point, I, I don't even really want to be with him because the fact that you can keep stuff from me, it's not, I can't trust you. Well, because you came in for answers, this court has done a full and complete investigation. At this time, the court will call a licensed private investigator and former special agent for the FBI, Kendall Scholl, to determine, is he cheating? <laughs> Mom, please just call Mr. Scholl to the court. Kendall Scholl. Good day, Mr. Scholl. How are you? I'm great, Your Honor. How are you? We're doing fine, thank you. Uh, you conducted a polygraph examination of Mr. Milner, correct? I did, Your Honor. You asked Mr. Milner, did the comb, name tag, and bandana that Ms. Heath found in your home belong to a woman with whom you had sex? What was his response? He said no. What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined he was being truthful. Oh, that's one. Yeah. That's one. <laughs> you asked Mr. Milner, since August 3rd, 2017, have you gotten a woman pregnant other than Ms. Heath? What was his response to that question? He said no. What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined he was being truthful. <laughs> two for two. But don't get ahead of yourself. I saw your reaction. All right. Mr. Milner was asked, since the beginning of your relationship with Miss Heath, have you had physical sexual contact with Miss Evans? What was his response? He said no. What did the lie detector determine? Your Honor, on this question, he was being truthful. I'm just a realist, you know what I mean? <laughs> Come on, man. King got you. Yeah, Miss Heath. <laughs> You came here to get your answers. How does that make you feel? It makes me feel a lot better. Like, I'm happy <laughs> that I'm not the only one being faithful. Okay. <laughs> Miss Heath, you know, isn't it something you want to do, though, right now? Go on, do it. Go on I over apologize. There. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, Miss Heath. You know, there's an old saying, when you go looking for stuff, you're going to find it. You got to get past that if you want this relationship to work. You all have been together two years. You're living together. But these cheating allegations have moved you from your bedroom to the couch or a family member's house. Please explain what has happened that has caused you to change your sleeping arrangements. Um, well, Your Honor, I feel like Ms. Brunson isn't being 100% honest. I feel like she's cheating on me with my brother. <laughs> with your brother? With my brother. Wow. What? You believe your girlfriend is sleeping with your blood brother? Correct. I mean, I, cheating is bad in and of itself, and then you complicate it by with his brother? But that's the thing. I'm not sleeping with his brother. I'm not sleeping with anyone but him. And you're mad about it. I, I really am, because that's insulting. It's one thing to say that I'm cheating on you, so you don't trust me, but it's another thing to say that I'm cheating on you with your brother. Like, this is somebody that, this is blood, someone you grew up with. Like, are you serious? <laughs> it's, it's, it's really upsetting. Well, she's doing stuff that's untrustworthy, so it's not, it's not like it's, it's... If you show signs of, of cheating and if it's awkward when it comes to them, then what am I supposed to... Okay, so what signs am I showing? Well, she took the question out of my <laughs> mouth. There it is. What signs is she showing? Um, well, um... Just the, the environment in itself is just causing me to be extremely uncomfortable. So I'm, I'm checking her phone. I'm, I'm noticing that she has extra pennies in her, in her purse and, and wipes in her purse and stuff like that. So... So you're going through her purse? Yes. She is. You know that a woman's purse is sacrosanct, right? Exactly. <laughs> Thank you. I do. I mean, even I know you don't go in a woman's purse. <laughs> that, that would be a problem, that, Mr. Cutler. That's how we survived this long. That's how we survived this long. And, and you know what? You're so well-trained. <laughs> when I invite you... Well-trained? Well, well-versed. <laughs> okay. 
uh, well versed that you even when I ask you to go in my purse, you're like, really? For sure? <laughs> I mean, y'all, and I'm like, yes, I told you to go get my keys. So, I mean, it's a real thing about Amen. women in their purse. When you found out that he had gone through your purse, what was your gut reaction to that? <laughs> well, my gut reaction was to just blow up. I, 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 I had to take a few breaths <laughs> to yeah. calm down because, like you said, like, a woman's purse is sacred. But then, not only did you go through my purse, but based off what you found, which to me isn't anything, you're still accusing me of doing something. Like, I, I, don't, I can't speak for all women, but yeah. me and my friends keep extra pair of panties, keep wet wipes because I don't like tissue. And, I mean, we're, we're female. There are some things that could happen to where we might have to change our panties and wet yeah. wipes keep us like clean cheating. in that area. Oh, like cheating? Yeah, that, exactly. <laughs> that, there is nothing about his brother that even remotely turns me on. I mean, he's Not like my same size and everything. Like, I'm trying to make love and I start fires. Two sticks ain't gonna work. <laughs> oh! Like, it's, it's not. <laughs> I'm not doing that. Oh. Uh, okay, so, so you was... like a man with a little meat on his bone? I do. And, okay. and, and obviously, he has that. And, and he's a good-looking man. He's a oh, good-looking yeah. man. I mean, his brother is ugly, but his personality, I just... That's not something I'm attracted to. So there's okay. nothing about him. Okay, so tell me why you think she's cheating. Like I said, every morning, I, I, I get up to go to work. Um, I typically grab my shirt out the hamper. Um, this particular morning, I grab my shirt out the hamper and a pair of boxes fall out um, okay. that aren't mine. That aren't yours. Boxes yours. with me. Yeah, they're not, they're not mine. Okay. So, um, as you can see, these are... Extremely small. Right. She's right. a hefty guy. This ain't no hefty underwear. It can barely fit on my arm. Yeah. Can't they one tidy. Them. You know, so they're, they're very small, as you can see. Um, at the time, my brother was staying with us. So, of course, the first thought was, these are his. I mean, he's a smaller, he's a slimmer guy than I am. Um, so the first thing I thought was, okay, what are my brother's boxes doing in our room? But if the hamper's see, there... And you can see the layout of my apartment, you would have a better understanding. So would you mind if I step to the screen? You submitted oh, the, the layout. Is I that did. correct? Yes, ma'am. Sure. Please do. So tell us what we're looking at. So there's a hamper in our bedroom. There's a hamper in Mr. Be I mean, in my brother's bedroom, and there's a hamper in the washroom. So my first question is why? Like this is our bedroom. Is he in our bedroom? Why is it, why are they in our bedroom? You can step back. Okay. Let me you. wait till you get to your party. <laughs> All right, Ms. Bronson. Ms. Bronson, I mean, those boxes look like they could fit a stick. They, they definitely do. So, were you starting a fire? No. <laughs> Never that. Never that, Judge. <laughs> Never that. Um, just like I was telling Sergio, as you can see, we share a bathroom. And Sergio has lived with his brother for years. He knows that his brother is not a clean person. So, when I saw these clothes on the ground, I picked them up and I put them in the hamper so that they can be washed. So you're just saying this is a simple accident. It was exactly. just, just you trying to keep the place tidy. Exactly. Not you sleeping with his brother. Disgusting. Okay. Very clear how she feels about that. At least that's what she's saying. <laughs> Mr. Babineau, do you buy that explanation? I don't. Obviously. You don't buy it. I don't. Are there any other reasons to believe that Miss Brunson has stepped outside of your relationship typically, with your brother? More yes. importantly. Typically, we have uh, events at the house from time to time. So this particular incident, we were having a barbecue at the house. Um, once things start to die down and stuff starts to wrap up, um, the neighbor from next door uh, pulls me aside and states that um, she's seen some strange activity between Angel and my brother. You submitted a video statement from this neighbor. I did. All right. Can we watch that right now? Please. It was this one particular time that they were having a barbecue, Angela and Sergio were having a barbecue. And I went outside to smoke a cigarette. And while I was out there, I seen, uh, seen her get out the car with Skylar, that's Sergio's brother. And he grabbed her. No. They had listened and gone for an hour, over an hour. Ms. Brunson, what was that about? Okay, so what uh, Sergio did not explain is that this neighbor is someone that I've told him on more than one occasion I believe likes him. Because mm -hmm. the very first time that we met, like, when he introduced me to this girl, she gave me the, the, the meanest of looks. Like, I stepped in on her territory or something. So... Never made you feel welcome. At all. You know, Mr. Keller, it... Generally, when you have relatives accusing relatives of sleeping with their significant other, right. it's usually something else going on Something here. else cooking under the surface? Under the surface. So, I'm gonna ask you, Mr. Babino, what's cooking under the surface? Well, I was dating a girl. Um, at this time, me and my brother were living together. Um, and 
I at that time I worked like right around the corner from from my job. So on my lunch break, I'm calling. She's not answering. So I call my brother. He's not answering. So um, you know, suspicion set in, worry. So I shoot to the house. Um, upon opening the door at the house, they're on the couch naked together. <laughs> And that's, that's what hurts the most. I mean, I understand his past, and I understand that because of what happened, he could, he's having trust issues, but those trust issues need to be with your brother. That has nothing to do with me. And you are adamant that you are not sleeping with... I'm not. ...his brother. No. And you're like, that's what I think is going on. That's what I think is going on. And all the evidence is here to show it. That's what it feels like, yes. Well, there's your side, there's her side, and there's the brother's side, Woo! and the brother is here. Why would you a sporting man, please? Mr. Babin. Go right up to the witness stand, sir. Put your boxes, bro. Bring that one, man. <laughs> would you state your name, please, for the record? Skylar Babineau. Okay. And Mr. Babineau, you are the brother of Mr. Sergio Babineau, correct? Yes. How did you end up in that position, naked with his girlfriend? <laughs> um, well, at the time, I didn't even really think that was his girlfriend. Like, I, th I, I thought she was just like, you know, at that time, it's two men living together. It's kind of like two bachelors living together, you know what I'm saying? They're gonna have friends sleep over, you know what I'm saying? I got people that sleep over, he got people that sleep over all the time. You know, I think it was that he cared for it that way. You know what I'm saying? So... I mean, roommates share food, <laughs> and roommates may share clothes. Yeah. They might share bills. Share that. And so you figured any woman he brought home was fair game? I mean, if he don't care about it like that, then, I mean, and if she coming on to me, then yeah. Wow. I mean, he went, I, it, it went like Angel. Like, I knew that's his girl. I knew he liked her. I mean, I put them together. All right. Well, how did your boxers end up in their hamper? That ain't mine, man. That, that don't even look like it fit me. I'm skinny and all, but they... They look like they're <laughs> your size. I wear only one brand. All right. We heard another instance where a witness saw you grab Miss Brunson's bottom when you all came back from the store. We ain't touch at all. At all. So you completely deny even touching her? No, nah, I'm telling you, not. I ain't touched this girl at all. And I ain't no stick. Let me set the record straight. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> slim. Slim. <laughs> not no stick. <laughs> you you heard that testimony, too. Yeah, huh? man. But you're not no stick. Man. Yeah, I ain't no stick. Then that leads me to this question. You know, has there been an instance of these two sticks rubbing together? <laughs> no, never that. Never that. You have not had any kind of intimate relationship with Ms. Brunson? No, I put them together. Like, I... I think the girl was just mad because she liked my brother. And I introduced Angel to my brother. So, I mean, she kind of got a vendetta against Angel and me, you know what I'm saying? So, but I ain't never touched Angel, ever. So, Mr. Babino, do you believe your brother? No. You don't believe him? Wow. You still believe that something has gone on between your brother and your girlfriend? I mean, based on the past, I... I mean, even though he's tried to earn my trust back, at this point, I, I don't fully have his trust. You still believe your girlfriend slept with your brother? Yes. If it turns out that that's true, if the results today come back that show that your girlfriend has slept with your brother, what's going to happen to your relationships? This relationship and this relationship? Um... They'll both be done. <laughs> to be burned twice by, you know, a, a relative that, you're, that you love, I mean, it's okay to... Like I said, fool me once, shame on... You're right. Shame fool, on you. Yeah, fool me twice, it's a wrap. Yeah. So you're willing to walk away from love and blood? Yes. And, Ms. Brunson, this has got to be hard on you, because you are accused of sleeping with his brother. And you're standing here listening to this testimony, listening to the evidence, and you and your heart feel like you haven't done anything wrong. Exactly. That's, that's exactly how I feel. I mean, there's one thing... I don't know. One of, one of my biggest pet peeves is being lied on and yeah. accused of, of things that I did not do. 
Yeah. And I've never been accused of doing anything to this extent. I mean, it's one thing to come to me and say, yeah, I believe you're cheating on me, but I'm cheating on you with your brother? Like, that, that's, that's, that's a type of character diminishment that I, I, I would never... It's just low down, dirty, nasty Exactly, stuff. exactly. We've got a situation here where you got two relationships on the line. Mr. Babineau, our witness says he never has had any kind of intimate relationship with Ms. Brunson. And we have the fact that these two brothers have history. And for all these reasons, Mr. Babineau believes there's something going on and he wants to get to the bottom of it today. And if it turns out that it's true, both relationships are done. Well, this court has done a complete investigation to answer all of those questions. At this time, the court would like to call out certified polygraph examiner Michael Williams to determine, is she cheating? <laughs> Mr. Williams, would you share with the court what your credentials are? I'm currently a certified polygraph examiner for the state of Georgia, and I'm also a private detective. All right. You asked Ms. Brunson, since the beginning of your relationship with your boyfriend, Mr. Babineau, have you had sexual intercourse with his brother, Mr. Schuyler Babineau? What was her response? Your Honor, she said no. What did the lie detector determine? Your Honor, the lie detector determined that she was being truthful. You asked Ms. Brunson, since the beginning of your relationship with your boyfriend, Mr. Sergio Babineau, have you had sexual intercourse with any other man? What was her response to that question? Your Honor, she said no. What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined she was being truthful. <laughs> Mr. Babineau, now that you've gotten the answers to the questions you had, what do you see as the future of your relationship with Ms. Brunson? Well, first off, I owe both of them an apology for the accusations in general. Um... <clears throat> So I, I, I do apologize to both of y'all, and I do hope that me and Ms. Brunson can move forward. Um, if, she, if she had me, I'd like to give her a hug if she doesn't mind. Ms. Brunson? Uh, I don't think she's at that point yet. And I that's don't you. Know, I want to hug you. She don't give me a hug. You can hug me. Oh, boy. Ms. Brunson, you've been carrying a weight. I have. It's gone. The question is, has the weight done so much damage that you can't move forward? I don't, I don't think it's anything that a, a seven-day cruise wouldn't fix. Whoa! <laughs> I like how that girl 